Now for these questions we need to multiply whole numbers by 10. And we can do that just by writing a zero on the end of the number. So 28 times 10 is 280. That's because 28 times 1 is 28. And if there's a zero, an end zero in a multiplication question, there will be an end zero in the answer. So now we have 509 times 10. That's 5090 because we can just write a zero on the end of our number to multiply it by 10. And now we have 86,054 times 10. That's 860,540. So the number we started with, with a zero on the end. Now putting a zero on the end is a good way to multiply whole numbers by 10. But to multiply decimals by 10, we need to use a different method. So be aware that this trick only works for whole numbers. And the reason why we can put a zero on the end is because what's really happening when we multiply by 10 is that digits are moving one place value to the left because when we have 10 of something, we have one of the next place value column along. So for this first question, we started with 28. To multiply by 10, we can move the digits one square across or one place value across, but now we have an empty ones column. And to make it clear that the two is now in our hundreds and the eight now in our tens, we need to write a zero in our ones to give us our answer 280. Then we started with 509 and when we multiply by 10, the digits move one place value to the left. We need to write a zero in our empty ones column so all of the other digits are in the correct place value column and our answer is 5090. Then we had 86,054. If we move the digits one square to the left, we need to write a zero in our empty ones column to give us our answer.